Higgins looking over the North Texas front four, looking to throw, screen pass, right side, Giot. Hello, says Zach Orr. Zach Orr finished his North Texas career as an icon for Mean Green football. Now, the consummate overachiever is fighting to make a similar impact in the NFL. There's no doubt uh, when, when, when he gets to that camp, as he has, and he's getting the opportunities that he is, he's going to make it really, really hard on those guys to cut him. If there's anybody that deserves it, uh, it's Zach Orr. You know, he's, he's done everything right from the, the minute he got here on campus, three-year team captain, uh, always in great academic standing, always great out on the football field, always great in the community. You know, just the, the, the shining light for our football program for the three years that we were here. He's a backup all over the place on special teams. He's the only guy, surprise, surprise, that's playing Mike and Will and Sam because he's so smart and he carries all that to the practice field every day. So God willing, we can keep cheering for him with the Baltimore Ravens. He's a very active player, you know, and they do like him. Um, you know, he's, uh, they've, the Ravens really like to get their young players a lot of reps in practice. They're known to have be one of the organizations that likes to find them. I, I mean, they've gotten credit for sort of setting the standard around the league for finding undrafted free agents. But, uh, you know, Zach Orr's has had a solid camp. They, they've spoken pretty highly of him. Um, his biggest issue is he plays a position where the Ravens are probably deepest in. Just two years ago, Lance Dunbar was in a similar situation to Orr's an undrafted free agent vying for a spot on an NFL roster. It, it, it seemed like he was a, a long shot at the time, and when you looked at his stature, it was like, ah, I don't know, this guy's awfully small. But when you started seeing him work on the field with the guys, his speed was a little bit uncommon. I mean, he, was, he had a dimension that gave him an opportunity to make the, thing, the team, and I think that's what the Cowboys saw. I'm not surprised because I got an opportunity to see him play at North Texas a number of times and I said this is today's NFL player and the NFL has changed to me in the sense that you have what I call satellite players. These guys you can move in, they can run a little, they can catch a little and he's perfect for today's NFL. This is a guy who will have a significant role in this offense if he can just stay healthy. I think that would have been the case down the stretch last year. Everybody saw what he could do Thanksgiving against the Raiders where, I mean, he was explosive. You get him out in space and he's an explosive back. Now he wants to prove that he can do more than just be uh, a space player. He can run between the tackles and those sorts of things. I'm here, you know, but I haven't, my goals, are, I haven't made my goals, so I haven't made it until I make that, you know, my, my goals. I wouldn't say I made it. You know, I'm trying to do bigger and better things. I don't. I don't want to just be here. I want to be great, and you know, and get my goals. Transitioning to the NFL, Orr is learning firsthand the differences between the collegiate and professional game. When you go from junior high to high school, it's one step. When you go to high school to college, it's a step and a half. When you go to college to the pros. It's about three or four steps, so he's experiencing that now because, as I told him when I were little, uh, nobody sucks in the NFL. <laughs> it's just one of those deals. They may not be as good as the next guy, but nobody sucks in the NFL. Guys are bigger, faster, stronger, but the main thing is uh, guys with their technique because it's, the, it's a business, it's their job. You know, they have nothing else. You know, I'm so used to playing football and having school on the side. Like this is football is is all these guys' jobs. So. Uh, you know, they're perfectionists at it, so you have to always be on your A game, not even just on games or scrimmages, but for practices as well. He has to sit around and understand that the guys you're playing with, playing against, it's their job. They have a mortgage, they have car payments, they have all these different things that he didn't have when he was in college, so it's a completely different deal, and that's the biggest thing for him. You're going to work. He knows that it's a job and, and it's something he has to go and do and, and take it very seriously. It's, it's not football practice, you know, it's not called football practice, it's called I'm going to work. It's definitely a, a big time adjustment. Uh, it's, it's, it has been challenging, but you just got to take it day by day and uh, take it slow and just keep pushing forward and just keep grinding. Uh, but it's, it's been a great opportunity and uh, I've been having fun. Just, you know, to have NFL players and uh, players from out of North Texas in the NFL means and that North Texas are doing a good job, you know, producing uh, NFL players. Two guys that left such great legacies here in their career at North Texas, and then to go on to the next level and uh, hopefully have a chance for both of those guys to make those 53-man rosters. You just love it. You pull for them. You cheer for them. Uh, your heart goes out to them. The, the whole football team, the whole football family here, everybody's cheering for those guys. 
because they left their legacy. They left their mark on each of us and all of us here at North Texas. It's a, just a really special story and, uh, and, and really a great sounding board for this university and this football program to be able to say to young men in the area, look at what's possible if you come and play football here. It means the world to the school. It just shows that uh, we got great student athletes. We got guys that can uh, that you come and watch on Saturdays right there in Denton, Texas, and you can see those guys playing on Sundays. Seeing the multiple guys in the league is, is a great thing for this university and a great thing for the students to see and hopefully get us more support because there's some guys there that's now that can play in this league. This segment of Beyond the Green is brought to you by Bud Light. There's no place in America that's got 12 Division I schools except the state of Texas. Uh, there's no high school football in America that has the following, the commitment, the facilities, the coaching, the players anywhere in the country except Texas. And here we are right down the road, two phenomenal universities, great universities. All these graduates around the country and sometimes around the world that have come out of North Texas and SMU that want to wear their, their colors proudly and it comes down to a football game, that four-quarter football game, to make you feel like you have a little bit of an edge because of this great universities that we both have in both these places, right down the road. I consider a rivalry someone that's, you know, in the same, the same state as you, down the street, and they pretty much claim this area, the DFW. So I feel like the SMU is probably going to be the strongest rivalry that we have. It definitely brings, you know, more momentum and uh, more excitement to the game just to know that you're playing against somebody you probably grew up with or that you know you know personally. It can impact recruiting, it can impact image, it can impact perception. Got two great conferences going head to head saying who's best, who's best, who's best. The regional rivalries we want to be are the SMUs, are the Texas, are the TCUs and while those are great those aren't the conference rivalries, those won't get us conference championships. So it's a fine line of what we want to do and who we need to beat. We need to beat the Rices and the UTSAs, and we want to beat SMU in Texas. So every one of these times we line up on Division I schools playing each other to try and find out who's best, of course it's important. It's pride, it's success, it's loyalty, it's bragging rights. Go prove it on game day that you have a better football program than your opponent, and that's the opportunity we have this week. This game is important because we, we want to get our first win and we need to establish a base for the rest of the season. And especially hit being a home opener here in Apache, we want to establish a good base and get our first win and have our fans, give our fans something to look forward to for the rest of the season. We focus up because at UT, they, they basically outplayed us. They out-toughed us. They, they did everything better than us. I don't think we came out and played with the confidence that we usually do. Uh, I think we let some of the moments in the game get to us as a as an offense. I feel like we could have we could have moved the ball way better than we did because I've I've been around this program a lot and I know what we're capable of. You know, it was obviously a tough game and uh, they gave us a lot of different looks and um, I think it's something that we can prepare for for the rest of the season. Um, you know, with pressure, defenses, um, things that worked, thing that things that didn't work. And uh, I think we also, you know, we know we have a lot of uh, room for improvement and we can only go up from here. We've already watched the film numerous times and are kind of learning from our mistakes. Uh, so we're kind of, today we're going to kind of put the game behind us and really just not focus on SMU, but still learn and try to improve on the things we didn't really do well in the UT game. We didn't play good enough and we have to improve immensely. But the game's behind us, you have to learn from it, channel frustration, channel embarrassment, because embarrassment can be a real good motivator. If you channel it the right way, then we really got a chance to improve and get better this week, which we have to do, no question about it. Um, I'm not in the mood, uh, as, as anybody is right now, to cover anybody's ass, because um, we all didn't do a good enough job. It's no fun getting our ass kicked, it's no fun losing. That's not what we spent the last eight months getting ready for, but that's what happened. And where we go from here is the most important thing. Um, taking a setback and turning it into a comeback is one of the things you really learn in this profession as a coach. The important thing is when you don't do what you're supposed to do and we didn't do as good a job as we should have as coaches and players, it's a lot more important that everybody take responsibility and share the blame just like we share the glory. You have to learn from what happened, you go on national television, got our ass kicked. There wasn't anybody on a football team played the way that we need to play to win consistently. So do we have a lot of room to improve a course with you? Oh, we got a long ways to go. We got a lot of room to go here. I'm not here to massage a loss. We got our asses kicked. 
and I'm in charge of the whole thing. That's what my job is, to get it right and make sure we come back and we're a lot better when we go back out to practice today. And there's a lot of things we got to know in this room. There's so much things on your plate. I get it, all right? We, I played the position. I know that. There's so much on your plate. And I get that part. We got to know. We, I expect you to know everything. That's what I expect from you. I expect perfection. Consistency, make some plays. You don't have to be out there throwing strikes all over the place. Respect the football. Take care of the football. This is something. This has got to be stealing for us. This has got to be easy five, six yards every single time. Every time. Being efficient with the ball, taking charge, getting us out of bad plays, getting us into better plays, and quite frankly, being a leader on the field that the guys can trust and look in the eyes in the huddle and know that they're going to war with a guy that's going to help lead them. Realistically, right here, we don't want to make that throw, right? No way. Let's hand this baby out. They don't care. If the safety walks down, we got somebody accounted for him. But throwing into a hard defender is not, that's not what we do, right? We know better than that as a group, right? guy that manages the games, a smart player, gets the ball to our playmakers, and understands my mentality, what I'm looking for in a quarterback on the field, and the expectations we look for in our room. Go out and execute the game plan and get us a win. This segment of Beyond the Green is brought to you by Eastside Denton, Texas.